video, I'm going to show you a very useful circuit if you're working with inductive loads, such as transformers or motors. You'll know that when you turn on a very low resistance inductive load, that there are very large inrush currents. And due to the high currents with those inductive loads, you can blow your MOSFETs or your transistors, which I have done many times. So I came up with this circuit. And what this circuit does, it prevents the MOSFETs and transistors from blowing up when you connect the load and you get the high inrush currents. So the best way to resolve the issue of the extremely high inrush currents from damaging your components, the MOSFETs and the transistors, is to use a circuit just like this. Now in this case, this works on 12 volts. If you're connecting an inverter to a 12 volt battery, for example, the circuit would be perfect. You have your battery positive into a 20K resistor, and that goes into the base of a 2N2222A. From the base, you have a 1000 microfarad capacitor going to the negative, and you also have in parallel with that capacitor a 36K. The collector ties into a relay, and you want to make sure you use a high current relay. In my case, when I use the circuit, I used a double pole 20 amp. Contacts were rated at 20 amps, so I needed about 30 amps. I paralleled both of the relay outputs together, and by doing so, when the relay activates, I now can handle up to 40 amps through both of those contacts together. Now, the circuit that you're going to drive, this is the load, the inductive load circuit. You're going to use a very small value fixed resistor of a high wattage. Now, generally, you're going to want to use around a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohm. 0 0.5 is kind of high, but you could use up to 0 0.5. So you have this circuit up to the relay. Then you have the 12 volt DC feeding into your inductive load circuit. Now, ordinarily, when you would connect this to the positive, you'd get a pretty big spark because of the inrush current going into the circuit. Now, once this connection is made to the battery at the exact same time, you have current flowing through this 20K slowly, charging this 1000 microfarad capacitor. Once this charges up in voltage, this transistor will turn on, allowing the relay to activate, closing the contacts between the normally open and the common, and then you effectively bypass the resistor. So the resistor is in the circuit only for about a half of a second to a second. After that point, this circuit right here will turn on the relay, allowing the resistor to be bypassed, allowing full current to go to the load. Now the length of time it takes before this relay closes is determined by the value of the capacitor and the value of this resistor. After power is disconnected from the circuit, the resistor here, on the, which is parallel with the capacitor, is there to bleed down the capacitor. So if you decide to start the circuit up, within a second or two, you'll still get a delay. You don't want to have that capacitor holding a charge because the minute you connect and disconnect, you won't have that half of a second to a second delay on the inrush. Now the way this is set up right here, 20K, 1000, 36K, that transistor, I get around, it's about a second, one second delay. So when you power the circuit, the inrush resistor limits the current going into the circuit with the load and after about one second the relay clicks on bypassing the inrush resistor allowing full current from the battery to flow into the load. This circuit is excellent because it's designed for handling very large loads. A thermistor is only designed most of them up to 10 amps and that's not really enough current. So if you're dealing with 20 or 30 amps or 40 amps all, you, all you're going to need is just a large relay that can handle the current and a very high wattage, low ohm resistor. Then you just made a very effective inrush limiting circuit. Now the problem you have with the NTC inrush limiting thermistors is the amperage rating of those thermistors is generally under 10 amps. So if you're dealing with a circuit that's 20 or 30 amps, you're not going to be using that thermistor. And the other problem you have is they generate a lot of heat. Once the current goes into the circuit, they're cool, but as the current flows through the thermistor, it gets very hot, 
making the resistance drop into the circuit. So it starts out as a higher resistance if this was the thermistor. And when the current flows through it, it heats up, the resistance drops, and then you get almost full current going to the load. Meanwhile, while this is getting full current, the thermistor is extremely hot. So you do need adequate cooling for the thermistor. You can also use an inductor to limit the inrush, but that's a little more complicated. Special formulas to use. So to me, the best circuit that you can use to limit inrush current and protect MOSFETs and transistors from exploding is this circuit right here. Second best would be the thermistor if the currents are under 10 amps. Now, this circuit here, now the circuit right here I found online and it's designed for limiting inrush current and if you also have a problem with equipment, certain high voltage equipment causing your breaker to trip from the inrush currents when it turns on, sometimes it might not trip the breaker, sometimes it does trip the breaker. This is a circuit you're going to want to use. The circuit is very similar, you have an inductive load and going from the high voltage you have a low value resistor around 0.1 ohms and you only want that resistor in the circuit for the initial inrush and after the inrush then you want to have it removed from the circuit so once power is applied this load comes on and it takes a little bit of time for this circuit here to develop enough current to have this relay activate once this relay activates then this resistor here is effectively bypassed you have full current now this circuit is designed for 220 volts if you want you can make it for 110 I would just make the value of this resistor here instead of a 50 I'd make that a 25 ohm the 1 meg you can make like a 470 or a 560k and the 1.22 microfarad 400 volt you can make that a 2.2 to 2.6 a 240 volt rated capacitor and then all the rest of this can stay the same but if you're not happy with a transformerless power supply then what you could do is you could use my circuit at the bottom here and just take a little 12 volt wall transformer that you could plug in the receptacle it'll power the circuit and then you could take this the contacts of the relay and connect it to your bypass on your resistor of your high voltage circuit if you found this video helpful please rate it a thumbs up subscribe and also post links to this video on other websites and blogs thank you